Hello and welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here today with video number 14 in the building of the beanery. So stay tuned. Okay, so in this uh, session of building the beanery, we're going to get into doing some uh, painting. I'm going to show you how to do a couple things, at least the way I do it. I think a lot of people out there kind of do it uh, in different ways. Uh, most of the time, any of these uh, different process of doing things, it's whatever really works for you. So I'm going to show you how I go about doing some of the things I do as far as painting goes. Uh, we're going to glue a few more things together. The second building, I'm going to try to get it to the point where we're going to put it together to some degree or at least get the parts all ready to be put together so it's more of a structure instead of two separate walls. Uh, it's kind of hard to put it together as a structure until you really connect it to the other building because if you put it all together and then those two ends don't meet perfect on the other building then you've kind of lost uh, all the work that you've done up to that point. So uh, anyway, we're going to work towards that process and see how far we get. We've still got a little ways to go before we can get to connecting these buildings. The painting is a big part of that. So uh, let's get started on this and uh, see how far we can get. Now I'm showing this uh, apple barrel paint. Like I've said before, I just use cheap paints for my stuff. I used a beachcomber beige because of the uh, tannish color in it. In the area that we uh, are here, the sand is colored that. So check with your area before you choose what color uh, mortar to put down. And I just put this down in heavy little blobs like this and you can watch it as it kind of filters its way back through the cracks of all the mortar lines and just settles itself right in. Now I did mix this a little thinner than I should have. It's probably 70-75% water and I had to come back and use uh, several coats on this to get it to actually show really well when I come back and redo the brick color and um, it's just you know doing all three buildings it just it's a long process especially when you have to come back and do several coats each time but i'm just using this really uh, a broader brush you don't have to go to every single little edge if you're putting down the, the stuff really heavy because it just uh you know, follows the cracks and works its way down the end when it's this thin and it comes back and gets all these uh, mortar lines to where when I come back and redo the brick or clean the face of the brick you'll uh, be able to see the mortar through it and uh, you know this building is old too it's hundred years so the, some of the mortar has been redone in this so uh, we're just making it look really good now I just come back and I use the same brick paint that I used for a uh, base coat on all the walls and after the mortars on what I do is I come back and I have these uh, cosmetic or makeup sponges that I bought at the Dollar Tree. This whole pack was a dollar and there's just a bunch of them in here. Um, and I take one of them apart from the little sheet they come in. They're kind of pre-cut but you have to tear them apart and you get these little wedges. And this is a closed cell foam. You could use any foam similar to this. It'll, it'll serve the same purpose. And then I just put a little bit of that paint out, just straight out of the bottle on a piece of paper. And I dab one corner of my sponge into that and then work most of it off to where the point there's just a little bit of paint left on the sponge itself. And then I just come back and touch it to the surface, not pushing it down hard, just barely touching the surface, and it leaves behind paint on the face of the brick, but does not get down into the mortar. Now, you, this is just something you have to practice a little bit to get the feel of it, but the same was with the uh, mortar. I'm going to have to come back and do two or three coats, but each time I do it, it also adds a little bit of texture to the brick, which makes the brick look a little bit more like brick and uh, it gives a really good effect and there you may have to come back and touch up the mortar lines or something a little bit but when you get it all done after several coats it really has a nice effect and really looks good especially on an old building with old looking brick now we have a bunch of projects going on with this so we're going to move on try to get some more of this painting done uh, I put the first coat on this uh, roof structure for the tower. In the 1800s there was actually another chimney on this building but it disappeared uh, prior to 1900 so even though I'm leaving a few other um, things on this building that had uh, 
disappeared over time I decided not to do the chimney on the tower I think there's enough interest with the roof access hatch and the uh, flagpole to uh, go ahead and uh, leave this as it is so here the paints kind of wet and still shiny I may even come back and put dull coat on some of this later on and then uh, here's just kind of a view with that in place you can see how now the gutters are formed really well uh, there is still you know that one corner kind of rises up off the structure a little bit so I'm gonna have to play with it and get it to set a little better in there now uh, and started painting the other roof down below but there is a chimney on that building so we'll come back and revisit painting that other roof here in a little while and one more little roof that we can go ahead and get painted and out of the way um, the shed roof which we had uh, finished the standing seams on before uh, just needs to go ahead and get black paint on it so we're going to get another painting little chore out of the way here and I'm just using a wide brush and every time I paint these standing seams what I do is just always drag my paint from the top down the metal and any uh, discrepancies in the paint will show up as, as a weathered effect on the roof that way if you brush across the roof then it's not going to be as realistic looking now the shed on the other side now that we've got our little vent tower on there needs to get some standing seams on it so we're going to come back here and here's the first picture of just the uh, seams along the roof wall and then here all the little pieces have been added in and I uh, still have a couple here to cut off but basically all the seams have been glued into place at this point so another little chore off the list one thing to keep on hand that's good for use for uh, tar paper and a lot of things is this tissue paper that you get in you know, Christmas time or whatever this piece came out of a, a box that I had uh, some cars in <clears throat> that needed to be worked on and I'm just going to cut a piece and glue it on this roof for the vent tower so I'm just using my regular tester cement here once again because it's uh, two different you know paper to plastic and it does a good job of that just making sure I get a good even coat over the whole surface now I cut this a little big and I'm just going to come on here and push it down and let it dry on the top and then come back with a knife edge and then just with a downward stroke using the plaster, plastic as my guide cut off the edges for that and then come back and put some black paint on it and the roof for the vent structure is done as well so you know it's nice to get a lot of these little chores just little things that uh, can be gotten out of the way now the other thing at the base of this uh, vent structure uh, where it meets the roof would have had to have some flashing on it and there are some little cracks there so this is something that I want to add in anyway just to cover those cracks and make it look a little more realistic. So once again I used that same tissue paper and just cut off a real thin strip and then added that in place around the base just cutting four squares and um, adding four separate pieces to all four sides of the vent structure where it meets the roof and then that completes everything on this little roof so we can go ahead now and get some paint on this roof as well <clears throat> I could have uh, probably painted the windows in this building before I uh, came back and, and put this vent structure and painted this roof on here it probably would have been a lot easier as well as going back and uh, dabbing on the paint for the brick and stuff uh, I mean I can still get into it it's just gonna make it a little more of a tedious process but here is the you know one more thing done and the roof is painted the tower is on it and glued all the little nitpicky little things that go along with that are all installed and in place as you see on the top of this uh, first structure that we built there is a chimney uh, I, I discussed earlier that I'm not going to add the one to the back of the tower which was gone but there's two different types of chimneys on this structure there's this real narrow one that has a single stand pipe in it and there's some really wide ones that have uh, three pipes in them on the three-story buildings back behind and there's quite a few of these so I don't really want to uh, 
hand make a whole bunch of them but I'm gonna go ahead and make one of this one for this front building now it's a little taller than the others on the other structures so I'm just gonna make it a little bit shorter because I want to come back and mold all of them uh, the same size out of the same mold so I'm just making a master here so I measured out the uh, four sides for the four squares of brick that I need and uh, coming back here and, and, and cutting all those out into four separate little pieces um, you know I just I want to get something that is a reasonably facsimile of what's there uh, so here's the four pieces I'm going to start with and uh, you know they're all even sides it's a perfectly square chimney as far as this one the bigger ones are more of a rectangular uh, shape uh, but like all the other uh, wall brick walls and everything that we worked on I want the corners to meet together really well so the brick lines just wrap around the corners of uh, all four corners of this structure so we're coming back and I'm going to go ahead and sand down the edges here of the uh, bricks to close to a 45 degree angle it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be sanded down fairly well and not overdoing it because I'm going to kind of come back here and use this file to uh, clean out the joints. And, uh, well, you can see here I'm cleaning out the file first. Always make sure you have a good clean tool to work with. It, it does make a difference when it comes down to the filing all these little areas. But then I'm just fine tuning that and bringing it down to a razor sharp edge where the uh, brick corners will meet. Making sure that it's at least a 45 or uh, so angle on it because I don't want the back corner to hold the front corners apart when I glue them together so you know after all that's done then I glue them together and we have this square to start working with <clears throat> and you know it's not perfect the corners did work out pretty good but uh, on that chimney there's two levels that step out on the top of that chimney for brick so I'm going to use these styrene pieces here and uh, cut some pieces which will uh, work to wrap around to form the two layers of brick at the top. There's a wide piece which will be two bricks high and then a narrow piece which will be uh, one brick high to go on top of that piece. And we start out just by adding two sides like we did with some of the other cornice work. Cut those off and come back the other two sides and that wraps the first layer of brick. Well, two layers. And then we come back and add the top layer that steps out one more on top of that layer. And it's just the same process. I do two sides and then come back and do the other sides. And then I need this round standpipe to center in the middle of that. So I came back and just added four slightly um, small pieces of styrene in the side so they had the exact hole for the round thing in the center. And it's styrene as well. And I did the same to the bottom of the chimney because I want it to be centered and straight up and down in the chimney. And then I put the styrene tube down in that opening and then glued it in place. The next thing I did was I left the top sticking out a good little bit and they mortar the seal on the top of all this with a little mortar cap. So I came back and used some of that green stuff and went ahead and formed uh, the area that would have been uh, molded on top of that. And then came back and just sanded all that down uh, to a nice smooth area. So the pipe still protrudes above where the mortar line is. The two brick uh, areas are there and I've scribed them out so that there's brick edges on the two styrene mortar pieces that stick out at the top. Uh, so once we mold these it'll be nice. The next thing I want to do is start putting together some pieces that will connect these two walls behind the tower building and one of the main pieces I want to start with here is actually the floor. Uh, what I'm going to do is put a floor in a tower that extends out to the very back of these two wing walls that we've made connects all this all together. Now I wish I kind of raised up these braces for the corners in this so I'm just going to have to cut out little squares where those go. So right here I'm just measuring all the different lengths and I'm going to cut this out of this uh, sign that I've been using to cut a lot of my uh, various uh, styrene parts out of. It's just a good source for inexpensive styrene. It works well. 
So once I get it cut, I use a square for everything because that's one of my issues was getting the building square. So I use a square and I came back after I had it cut out and all these little indentations that are cut out are for doors and uh, parts that uh, would protrude into the floor. I, I want to be able to glue the walls nice and square and all the corners especially. So here I just laid it down on the table and put all the parts in place and you know, moved everything around by hand. I haven't glued anything at this point to make sure that everything is going to be square and fit and that there's no further filing that needs to be done. And then I go on to cutting uh, these pieces for the uh, roof supports. This first one was a piece that I cut in my last video uh, for out at this end of the wall, but I decided to move it to the other end of the wall and cut out where the windows are and just beef that support up a little bit. And to replace that piece, what I did was just uh, cut this brick piece out for the other end because the roofs in this other structure will come into that and you'll see the brick exposed. So now we're just going to give you a shot of the two wing walls. This one, uh, you know, I might come back and touch the paint up here and there, but uh, pretty much this is done. The extensions on the wall and the inside were done. All the wall bracing was done. The windows and uh, paint and the mortar, all that's been painted. Uh, like I said, I may just touch some minor things up here and there. And this one, I don't have all the windows and doors. Everything else is pretty much complete on it, though, paint-wise and glue-wise and, and everything else. I mean, we'll eventually have to come back and put windows uh, behind all the windows and some window shades and that type of thing. But right now, I just want to get most of the structure done so we can glue all this together. And here's just a pan shot of uh, all those pieces all together. You see the uh, little chimney up on the roof there. Um, all these pieces just kind of taped in place where the building and the new uh, wall behind all those other structures will go. Uh, so anyway, I'm really pleased with this. We've, uh, we're really getting there before long. If I can get those weather windows and doors painted, we can start gluing all this together and uh, have the first part done. Okay, so there you have another segment of building the beanery. We've still got a long way to go. Um, the painting, I'm going to do a lot of it off screen. Uh, I mean, I kind of showed you techniques and things that I do. I'm constantly going back and forth between adding a few more uh, mortar lines that I accidentally got too much brick down in and then touching up the brick again and this and that. Uh, you know, I, I bump things as I go through. I'm just not as steady as I was in my younger days. Uh, actually, I'm surprised I'm able to go back and detail these windows and stuff and not end up with black paint all over every wall. Uh, but anyway, it is coming along, but it's just a slow process. There's a whole lot of windows and doors to paint. Uh, most of the trim work at this point has been done on those parts. And uh, the roofs are coming along, the flat end roof out there at the end. I really can't do till I get the chimney mounted on it. I don't want to have to go back and scrape paint and stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and you see we got to start on... Uh, getting some pieces together for tying those two walls together on the next segment back. Uh, so in the next video we're going to continue with working on that and, uh, because those two walls are just about done. And if I can get the painting done on the first structure then we can mount all that together and get it mounted to the building. Um, you can see from my last video the uh, two roof supports that I pre-cut for that uh, to the two walls back. Uh, originally I'd had a real skinny piece for up next to where the roof meets the tower wall and I just decided to come back and replace it with something a little more substantial so I took the end piece that was out there and cut out windows I'm going to use that piece up next to the tower to tie the two wing walls into the tower and then the other wall I went ahead and cut out a brick um, the brick on the back side of that wall will be exposed where the two roofs come up and come down and meet on that wall from those other roofs of the next little part of that building back. Uh, so there will be some brick exposed. Originally I was going to just use some uh, styrene in there and then put brick face on that once I figured out about how much I would need. But I just decided to skip that and uh, just went ahead and cut a big brick piece to go in there. Uh, it may need, I'll probably overcut it just a little bit. may have to trim it down a little bit uh, later on. Uh, you can see I went ahead and finished the floor for that uh, same structure. So with some roof supports in there and, uh, and, and the wall in there, that'll give a good structure 
to start working on roofs and stuff for that building once I can mount it to the tower. Uh, so in the next segment we're going to continue on now that I have that one small chimney together uh, it's time to come back because there's several of these that are that size I'm just going to go ahead and cast them I, I don't feel like can making a whole bunch of those and I can cast them and paint them and they'll be just fine so I'm going to go ahead and cast some of those in the same method that I did for those little uh, wooden scroll uh, supports for the cornice of the tower building and get some of those made there's also another larger uh, uh, chimney that has to be made that has several pipes in it instead of the one pipe like was in this one. So I may go ahead in the next video and start putting that together too because I want to cast several of those for the hotel building and I believe the second roof back on this building has one of those in it as well. Uh, so we're going to take care of that in, in the next uh, building or segment of this uh, build again. Um, and I, I don't think I'm missing anything. I, I, I always think of 10 million things to say and when I come to this part of the video I, I always I just forget things. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting old. Uh, that and chemo from a few years ago and cancer I think has kind of done my brain in. So it doesn't work the way it used to. Uh, but in any case uh, please like and share these videos. Uh, there's a lot of people out there would like to know how to scratch build and just don't know where to start. Uh, so there's some ideas in here that may help them get started. The whole thing is just to jump out there and do some scratch building. That's where you learn and uh, you know and build your skills to be able to do finer buildings. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There's a red below, uh, button below this video that you're watching on YouTube that says subscribe. Push that button and you'll be subscribed to my channel. And there's a little bell next to it. If you hit that bell, then when, you, when a new video is released on my channel, you'll be notified so you can come back and catch up on the series that's going along. Uh, and with that, um, I can't think of anything I've missed. I probably will as soon as I get done uh, posting this. But in any case, happy model railroading.